The History of Werner Erhard Est and the Landmark Form. This is an account of research and personal experience that led to the development of Landmark education and its courses. Alexander Everett. Werner Erhard was a student of Alexander Everett. Everett was born in 1921 and died in 2005. Everett developed Mind Dynamics, a spiritual self-improvement course that claimed to get people to a higher dimension of mind. In 1970, the company moved its headquarters from Texas to San Francisco, California, where Warner led Mind Dynamics courses. Warner became responsible for developing the coursework at Mind Dynamics. The student became the master and Warner decided to start his own training program. Even though Everett offered Warner a vice presidency in the company and a larger salary, Warner decided to part ways and take some of the Mind Dynamics staff with him. This was a better deal than his daughters got when he left his wife. Laurel Sheaf and Janoki Spitz were among the staff members that left with him. Warner founded Erhard Seminar Training, EST, in October of 1971. Laurel became an EST trainer and eventually a landmark form leader. Spitz became an EST staff member and Warner's third wife. Warner did not leave on good terms with Everett and separated his own training with a training from Mind Dynamics. It appears to me that Warner tends to take other people's work, put his own twist on it, and claim it as his own with no credit to his sources, then leaves people in his dust when he's done with them. This is an indicative trait of current landmark form leaders. Warner developed his training using a foundation of Zen teachings, Scientology, and Greek philosophy. His main idea was to separate the self to have a realization of who one is. The self was distinguished as an identity. After a four-day process, you are able to say, this is who I am. Some people feel they already know who they are. Some are in search of who they are. For some, Lamarck is the answer. And for others, climbing a mountain in India is the answer. Warner's Walk of Fame In 1972, Warner Brothers chairman Ted Ashley made taking S training mandatory for his staff. Warner became so highly praised in the industry that people started to call Warner Brothers, Warner Brothers, with an E. Hollywood stars such as Yoko Ono, John Denver, Cloris Leachman, Joe Namath, and Jerry Rubin participated in the S training. Valerie Harbour thanked Warner on TV after winning her Emmy. When I was on staff, other staff members were constantly meeting with Troy Byer to convince her to thank Landmark if she ever won an award. Warner's Golden When I was around six, my family went to an event surrounded around graduates and Warner. It was a mansion in Los Angeles. Warner was smoking a cigar and laughing in a jacuzzi. I went inside and a teenager was looking upset. I start talking to him and he tells me that his dad is the owner of the house and his parents are getting a divorce. He starts to move quickly while destroying things by knocking them down or pulling them off the wall. We then go outside next to the jacuzzi. Everyone was gone. Warner's golden retriever was wagging his tail and the teenager pushes him into the water. I go in after the dog trying to help him. Moments later, a furious Warner is standing over me, pulls the dog out of the water and accuses me of trying to drown him. I try to explain the situation, but he uses his technology on me and the next thing I know, my family and I are standing on a tennis court. We are cast out of the inner circle and monsterized. The teenager grows up, does a landmark form, and has risen to the top of the mountain. Warner found this dog on a beach in San Francisco shortly after having his insight to his identity. He thought of it as a sign. Now I'm thinking someone lost their dog and was probably looking for him. CBS News, 60 Minutes, March 3rd, 1991. After encountering Warner's alter ego when he thought I was trying to drown his dog, I believe his children suffered his wrath in an overly aggressive to abusive manner. And after seeing how his inner circle counter-reacted, I think they would go to extreme measures in Warner's name. I don't know if the allegations of molestation are true. There is a lot of uncertainty surrounding this. Warner and the people who lead the landmark form believe the universe can be read in such a way that the truth will have a resounding ring to it, and the truth cannot die. If there is a conspiracy, it's the efforts and cover-up that the people did following the 60 Minutes report. To some degree, I understand how his advocates get angry when people bring up the negativity. One of my heroes, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., was a flawed man. He was also one of the greatest men to have ever lived. People like Howard Stern love to bring up how he cheated on his wife. You have to question the character and intentions of someone 
who would only bring up such allegations and disregard their accomplishments. When it comes to Warner, his flaws are more extreme. Even if you can overlook them, believe they have been disproven, or just don't care, I would think these enlightened people would allow anyone to have their own point of view and opinions. I haven't given up that right. Another aggravating issue I have is how landmark leaders gain people's trust, put people through a process, and then use people's humanity to manipulate and expose them. If they want a participant to be viewed as a child abuser, family deserter, they will do it in the name of transformation. There are so many plots of movies in which societies or organizations appear to be perfect and people are willing to do anything to keep its image maintained. Then there are these characters who risk their lives to expose the true nature or events that people thought were not caused internally. I don't think it's that dramatic with Landmark, but if you look at LGATs as a whole, it is. If you include Scientology, then it puts it over the top. The Selling of Est to Landmark Education Selling a company to continue the work it's doing can be viewed as a selfless act. It could also be viewed as running away. Warner was faced with allegations that could potentially have brought down his company. Instead, he sold his technology to the people who were leading the courses. They created Landmark Education and the Landmark Forum. The leaders at Landmark went on to create many different courses and seminars all promising transformation around the subject matter. If it's a communication course, you will transform your communication. If it's a love seminar, you will transform your relationship to love. On paper, reading the promises of the company and courses, it appears to be something great. Even now, if someone said to me, they could make me love every second of my life and I would be fully self-expressed and realized, I would listen. At the root of it, it becomes, you are responsible for it all. You have to speak it into the universe as your word and be who you are. Be, do, have. There was a time when landmark leaders believed they were 100% authentic. They were only their possibility and they were the most powerful people on the planet until they were shown otherwise. This sort of arrogance is what gets people upset. It is the opposite of what the work appears to be. One thing I always found annoying when participating at Landmark was the constant, we are not this, we don't believe in that, we never said we were this or that, without saying what they are or what they do believe in. I want to make it clear that I do believe in people going through a transformation in their life. I do believe in higher levels of thinking and being. I want people to live in communities that work and for the world to be a great place to live for everyone. If you get that from Landmark, then keep on keeping on. I saw that as a possibility, but was crushed at both ends, by the landmarkies and those opposed. What I would like to see is Landmark being more open and honest about their past and making it easier for one to know where they stand with the group. How it seemed to be was, everything was a riddle within a mystery. I'm not claiming to know the answer. This is just what I have concluded as my only way to express the constant thoughts I have.